Hello and welcome to my channel. It's Hila here, Saturday Night Stitch, and thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you're having a fantastic day wherever you are. So today's post, we're going to be doing a browse through of Birder 6 2023. And since it's June here in the north of England, it's glorious summer and there is nothing better than English roses in summer. So this is what we do really well when summer comes along. So I've got some roses here to share with you from my garden. We have a yellow one, a red one, and a pink one. This one I think is called the rolled doll um, variety. The other two, I don't know what varieties those are because they were in the garden when I took it over. But wherever you are in the world, I'm sending you a bouquet of flowers and some lovely rose scent for summer. So we're gonna pop the flowers right over there. We have our line drawings and uh, heads up, I have traced a pattern from this and I'll tell you as soon as I get as I get to it, but let's uh, jump into it. So this is the English issue that I am using and I'll do another separate video to talk about why I've changed over from the German issue to the English issue. But it also does mean that the browse throughs will be a little bit shorter because there aren't as many advert pages in the English issue. So there's a benefit there. Okay, so first off, we have a pencil skirt, which is a very simple style, close fitting pencil skirt with a flounce at the bottom. So this is just a gathered panel. Now, I have made something very similar to this using a self-drafted pattern, and I really liked that skirt. And I found that these styles, they work best when you use a cotton sateen or a denim that has just got a little bit of stretch so that they can be really form fitting across the hips and then the flounce can actually hold its structure. So I quite liked that skirt. I eventually donated it because the navy blue fabric that I had used had begun to fade and then I just didn't like it because I think navy is one of those colors that it looks absolutely gorgeous when it's nice and rich. However, when it starts to fade, I think you're best off either re-dyeing the fabric or letting go and making a fresh one. And then up next, we've got jacket number 102, which is a very simple style Chanel type jacket, <clears throat> but it's really quite loose and baggy. And they've made it in a boucle fabric, so they get big points for me for using pink and white. I just think that that fabric is so lovely. I love how the cuffing has been done with an elastication. I mean, I do think that taking care of this particular jacket in this fabric is going to be pretty hard because if you've ever seen the boucle fabrics, they are quite delicate and quite loosely woven. And so you would need to be prepared to look after it. But absolutely lovely. I like the finishing with snap um, using snap fasteners because that creates a very streamlined, clean look. And then over here, we've got number 110, which is an off-shoulder peasant style top. And I have to say, lovelies, this is the pattern that I've already traced out because um, those of you that um, have the memories of elephants will remember that probably uh, about six or eight months ago, I bought some patterns during the McCall pattern sale. And I really was in love with these particular peasant style tops and I actually bought two of them which were this particular style. I haven't got round to cutting them yet because I have to figure out the sizing etc but the moment I saw this I just thought okay I am going to make this and I've traced it out it's three pattern pieces and it's fantastic so I really really like this the only thing that I don't like about this is that elasticated waist over here which I'm not going to do I'm just going to make it longer without that without this elastication over here. So this one is one that I really liked because it's very simple and I can see it working really well with a lot of outfits and a lot of garments. So moving on, we have some more flounces that are showing up in the form of a very lovely simple sundress. Oh, it's matching with the yellow of the roses. <laughs> So it's a simple sundress, right, with tie straps, and you've got um, a belt that's threaded through in order to give it some shaping there. 
So lovely, perfect for summer, really nice summery outfits in this particular one. And I noticed that the issue is quite dress heavy there. So we've got a lot more dresses coming. And then we have a simple wrap skirt with a rectangular pattern piece that you add a waistband to. Always very useful. And this style of pattern is fantastic for fabrics that have got a border, a selvage border print, such as the one that they have used in here, in fact. And then this is one of the first of the repeat patterns that I noted. So I'm pretty sure I've seen this pattern before. I think it was the March 2018 issue, I think. But it's basically a shift dress with a grown on sleeve. There is very minimal shaping in the form of the dart. But again, it is very, very minimal. So this sort of style, it's all about the fabric. And I think this one can be quite tricky because if you make it in a drapey fabric, I don't think it can work quite as well you need to have something that's got a bit of structure to it i think particularly in order for these sleeves to work and particularly for this to not sort of just drop off because even though the line drawing shows this to be almost a crew neck so you'd expect it to be a bit closer to the neck but it's actually quite wide so you're going to need to have some stability there to stop this from sort of just um dropping but i do like the v-neck at the back i always think that that is such a lovely flattering style particularly in summer and then we move on to sort of a peasant style dress again coming in with very simple drop shoulders over here so you don't have to worry about easing in the sleeves when you do your sewing and we've got some elasticated cuffs they're showing up again gathering at the waist and then we've got a casing at the neckline so that you can tighten it. So it's a pullover dress, eminently useful when you're on holiday. Make it in a nice, easy care fabric. And I can see this being a banging garment to take on holiday with you. I like the border print that they have used. I do think that it is quite lovely. Personally, I would probably make it a little bit longer just to make it more versatile um, for me in the sense that if there's a little bit of a nip in the air which we still get here in the north of England I would like my legs to be a little bit more covered up and I would probably add some tie belts over here just so that I can have a little bit more shaping as you may or may not know I like to dress along the lines of soft gamine principles according to the kibi style image thingy and about 60% of the time, I do try and stick to that. And I'm getting better at it. But I have noticed that clothes that go in at the waist, I like them a lot better. And they feel a lot more authentic for me. And then we move on to a midi dress, which I love everything about it, except for the flounces, the little straps that they have added onto the shoulders. I am a lady who has been blessed with incredibly wide and big shoulders. So I can certainly tell you that. I'm not looking to add more to it. However, I can see how this might work for other people. So thankfully, they do have another version of the dress that doesn't have this added um, strap thingy. I like how low and scooped the neckline is with the combination of the princess seam lines. You can really go in for as much shaping as you want or something a little bit more looser. And I would bet that you could make this in a ponty or a really stable jersey if you wanted to and eliminate the zip completely. I was quite tempted by this one, I must admit. I really was quite tempted, but it's the other top that worn out because I'd been looking to make something like that for quite a while. And then we've got the standard simple birded t-shirt with the drop sleeves, extremely baggy, and the tie at the front which I've never, it's never been something that I've been able to style at all. Maybe I haven't come into that season yet and that will come at some point. And then we have a lovely asymmetrical top, which I think is so gorgeous because I do love anything that shows off the shoulders. And I love the asymmetricalness because it just adds a little bit of um, interest to it. And we've got the cutout. However, However, despite my effusive praise for all the design details, this is made from a lightweight jersey. And I do not think I have the strength or the patience to deal with jersey trying to create these straps and not cause any puckering. So kudos to whoever sewed this up. But I'm probably going to have to say, you know, lovely to look at, not one for me to make. 
and then there's some brilliant summer accessories to make on here now this i think that this is possibly one of the most useful things that i have yet seen in a birder magazine and it's a poncho coverall which oh my gosh these things you can use them so much particularly in summer i have a similar one that i made about uh, four or five years ago it doesn't have a hoodie but i can't tell you how many times i've worn it and i've thought oh blimey if this had a hoodie this would be perfect so i'm definitely going to be making this but i'm not going to be doubling it up with the toweling fabric that they have done in with it i'm just going to use like a linen viscose fabric which is what i made my first one is and i wear that one to death in the summer it is just the perfect thing to throw over your swimwear or even on a hot day in the garden and you just want to swan around it's really really fantastic but the key to making this one work i have to tell you you got to get good quality fabric so you can't be using anything synthetic that's not breathable that feels uncomfortable close to the skin you want cotton lawn you want batiste you want linen or voile basically and that will work really well so anyway <laughs> let's move on to dress number 106 which i wasn't very impressed with this because when i saw the previews before the line drawings right i thought oh this is a really lovely looking dress and you can guess why because it's got that waist definition over here right but unfortunately the dress itself if you look at the line drawing there is no way you're going to achieve that sort of waist definition with an encased elastic it is just going to look really drapey really um, dumpy and I really do think that it would have been very useful to include a pattern for making this Obi style uh, belt with it because it looks fabulous with the belt. But without the belt, I think it's one of those things where you'd be, you know, uh, just a little bit disappointed. But you built it and it's fabulous. And then we've got another version of that simple T-shirt and then the T-shirt again, but this time without the tie. Again, if you want something to just chill at home in it it would work and then we have the jumpsuits the return of the jumpsuits now i've seen this jumpsuit before and i think it was in a 2019 issue or 2020 but i've seen it i've seen it before but it wasn't in purple it was in a different color and any of you who are long time watches uh, you will know that i have issues with jumpsuits and i could do an entire video <laughs> about jumpsuits but i won't go into those right now but what i would say about this is i'm all for the upper half of it now you just turn this into a dress like that and i think that that's a nice summer dress pullover style dress and instead of having a tie over here i would put some shearing or some elastic casing and then boom it's very useful right we've got a version of blouse number 111 except for now it's doesn't have the elasticated casing on the sleeves so it's more flattery so the elasticated casing that's great for gamines or soft gamines and then when it's not elasticated and it's just sort of like flattery flowing that's great for the romantic -y style if you're into dressing in a romantic style and it's more flowy so when i trace the pattern i traced the length for 109 because that's the length that i'm going for i'm not going for the cropped length at all because i want to be able to tuck it in to wear it tucked in or to wear it untucked if needed and then we've got a simple style sheath dress here which has been finished off with a zipper at the front the zipper adds a little bit of edge and this this sort of style it reminds me of when you draft your own body slope and you have to create what is called a moulage and the moulage looks effect basically like this with the princess line sleeve so this could be useful in terms from a pattern drafting perspective if you are interested in creating a sloper for yourself but not starting from scratch completely adapting what's already there and then we've got the high-waisted trousers which definitely showed up at least twice last year i'm sure and previously they've got the straight waist i think they're the Malena Dietrich trousers, which are absolutely fabulous if you have a long torso, if you're blessed with a long torso. I don't, I can't really carry off the straight waistband look unless if it's exactly under an inch. Yeah, about an inch is when it doesn't roll over on me. But for these ones, they look fabulous when you can carry them off. So we've got the pattern pages and then oh, I should have taken these out. So I've already taken these out to trace my 
my pattern and then we'll move on and there's more details on the wide leg Dietrich trousers which seem to be making a bit of a comeback the wide legs I'm seeing a lot more of them when I'm out and about and then we've got the twist front top which <laughs> I've never been able to crack how they make these but it certainly looks like it would be fun and it's one of the featured sewing patterns I think so it's the more complex one so you would be able to to do this one I'm curious to see what people would do with this and what it would look like if somebody were to use contrasting colors on the different pattern pieces and then we've got a pencil skirt that's just got some abstract lines added to which you could have fun with blocking uh, not necessarily my piece of cake I'm not necessarily yet converted to the quilting aspect so to me this feels like you're adding a little bit of quilting to dressmaking which i'm sure quilting is fun on its own and then we have a top here very interesting looking so to me this looks a lot more spotty style when i look at it like this and it's hard to see what the purpose of these flanges is because i can't when you're looking at this overall you wouldn't even know that there were some flanges on there so do we need them or do we not need them and in keeping with oh so there's a section here on how to pair these together lovely and there's that sewing tutorial that shows you how to do that tricky little twist at the front and then we've got a story of the swimsuits and honestly i do not know a little mini rant i would love for them to bring back you know, just nice, good looking traditional swimsuits that hold everything in together and don't leave everything flapping about. I would really love that. And there's a swimsuit pattern here, which is got a twisty detail and it's got the straps at the back and it's quite low on the back. So it would be quite flattering. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure that I would make another swimsuit for myself. I have made a swimsuit for myself before and i think i just didn't have access to the sort of swimsuit fabrics because i think that the trick to making a decent swimsuit is actually getting really good swimsuit fabric and that's the thing that i haven't cracked yet and if anybody knows where you can get really good swimsuit fabric please do let me know in the comments i'd appreciate that and then we have another sort of complex top i would say top number one two three they've given it two dots but i would put this more as a four dot pattern because you're going to need to do some facing for all of this to, in order for this keyhole to not gape and for this keyhole to not gape and for it to be able to support the structure of the zipper at the back. It's a lot of work. It looks deceptively simple to wear, but this is a lot of work to make. And I do like it for a dress, not as a top. I personally think that as a top, it doesn't necessarily justify all the amount of work that you would have to put in it and then we have that twisty thingy top again but this time instead of the capped sleeve the sleeve has been left to be um, a flatter sleeve and i think it works quite nice with the silver i like the cool tone models that they have going with this particular photo shoot and then we've got that skirt again but this time it's been made in a very weather inappropriate pleather <laughs> Because it's, um, I don't know, it's summer. The last thing I'm thinking about wearing in summer is pleather, I have to say. And then we've got that dress again. And you'll notice again, we're not seeing this dress without it being belted because I don't think it works without a belt on it. So you'd have to be conscious of that uh, when you make it. And then we have the second jumpsuit in this issue, which I actually quite like. It's very similar to the other jumpsuit at the front. However, the back is just a little bit different. At the back, we have a little bit of a crossy thingy going and it's sewn all the way up. So if you remember with the previous one, the back looked exactly like the front, but this one, the back is actually sewn up. And I am all down for everything right up to here, right? For me, if I'm going to make this, this is going to be a dress, a lovely maxi dress. And kudos to the fabric choice on this. I love this fabric. I actually have a very similar sort of style fabric that's in the navy and the white. I can't wait to show you that on a fabric haul that I'll be doing shortly. 
And then we move on to this jacket, which I'm very disappointed by, if I may say so myself. And that's because you, when um, the line drawings came out, this definitely caught my eye because I thought, oh, this is interesting. I haven't seen this before, this fanning, you know, this almost origami style going like this. And I was really curious to see what it would look like. But then we only just are given this one picture. So I really have no idea in terms of shaping what it's like. And I'm hoping somebody within the birder community We'll pick it up and sew this up so that we can get an idea of it. Or maybe my curiosity will be so strong I might try and make a twirl <laughs> before going any further. But we'll see. And then we have a really lovely, simple, just a very simple dress made fabulous by using a sequined uh, fabric over there. And here, as you can see, just the bust that's for minimal shaping. And you've got a boat neckline, which is absolutely lovely, delicious. And just some gathering. There is an overskirt um, over here. So it's actually got the front and the back. And then there's another panel of fabric just here, which does the draping. And that sort of reduces the chances of you accidentally exposing anything. So quite nice. Not a big fan of the sequin fabric. I guess if you wanted to do something special for, say, New Year's or something, this could work, I suppose. And then we have a halter neck uh, top, which I think... I feel like I've seen this. I think it was the 2010 issue that has something like this. So that's not necessarily so bad because it's reissuing an older pattern that other people might not have access to. And yeah, it's got all of the things. So it's halter neck and then you sort of tie it around and there's a little bit of a peephole detail here. I mean, it doesn't quite translate well when it's been sewn up. But yeah, not a big fan of this fabric. I don't think this fabric shows off this style. And then we have the pumpkin dress because it's got this pumpkin -y thingy going on the, uh, from a, on the lower tier of the skirt. But yeah, so this is that pattern before it was given the frills on the shoulder. But I think I like this one a lot better without the pumpkin -y ness at the bottom. I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of the pumpkin -y start look. And I think this only works with a very particular type of fabric. I'm not sure it works necessarily with any other types of fabrics. And it has to be a sort of fabric that doesn't need ironing. Because can you imagine the nightmare of trying to iron the pumpkin -y bit? That would be something else. And we have another super easy, uh, simple top, which reminds me of football, American football tops. Because it's just got this cross over here. And then you've got the neckline. So... Quite a lot of easy uh, styles that you could do and also a good mix of some more complicated ones. So this one's been given three dots, but I would give this four dots because, man, the level of skill to be able to match everything up just like so, just like so in order to make it look fabulous. But this dress, this was in March 2016, I think. Yeah, it was in a wedding issue. And I know because I traced this out at some point, I actually thought I was going to make this. But yeah, I'm not, I don't think I'm ever going to be making something like this um, at all. I, I just, I don't have the fabric and I'm not necessarily sure that I have the time or in fact, even where I would wear this because I'm at that stage in my life now where I actually do think about whether I'm actually going to be able to wear something which I think is very important because if you're going to put in a lot of time and effort to make something, you ought to be able to wear it. So, and then finally, it's the reader, um, the reader design. And it's a very practical smock with big pockets and pockets are everything. So it's not just one or two, it's one, two, three, four, five pockets. And I believe a welt pocket over here as well. So six pockets. So a very useful garment to have overall when you're cutting hair or when you're when you were um in the craft room you could even use this for gardening make it with a canvas so overall i thought that it has some decent um decent garments to it and it definitely had a lot more dresses than anything else i've seen recently so in total it had 10 dress sewing patterns two jumpsuits three skirts 
one pair of trousers, nine tops and two jackets, which isn't too bad for a June issue because I do think as we get into June, a lot more people are wanting to wear dresses and just feel a lot more summery. Anyway, that's what I've got for you today. I will be working on a video about the pattern that I've traced out, which is the blouse that I've been dying to make for quite a while now. And it's finally going to get made. So hopefully you will tune in for that. And I'll be doing a fabric haul very shortly to show you some of the fabrics that I've bought over the last few months. In the meantime, I will see you in the comments box down below. Let me know if you're going to be making anything from this particular issue or have you already made something. Is there something that I have missed out and maybe there is a gem that I'm not actually seeing and you need to point out the diamond in the rough to me. Until I see you next time, lovely people. Happy sewing. Bye.